Hey guys, I'm here with Dr. Divya Sharma, ex-senior register at St. John's Medical College and a renowned dermatologist and hair expert in Bangalore. I'm here with my lot of queries. Thank you, Pinky, for such a glorious introduction and I'm so happy to have you here with me. Ma'am, please tell me about common causes of acne. So, common causes of acne, you know, acne we basically divide into a physiological acne, which is teenage acne, which normally, you know, men and women both get from say 14 to 24 years of age. And then there is adult acne, which comes after 25 years. Some patients who had acne in teenage may persist, uh, the acne may persist even beyond 25 years. So causes is of course the hormonal thing. Now till 24, it is a normal hormonal uh, effect. You know, I would say it's a part of growing up. And then there are also reasons like polycystic ovarian syndrome, high prolactin levels, even thyroid can lead to sometimes painful adult acne. Then, you know, even metabolic disorders like diabetes and cholesterol can be one part of it. And we increasingly see stress as a common reason. So people, when they are, you know, during their project times, they break out more. Right. Then a Western style lifestyle, uh, you know, a diet which is very rich in refined sugars and carbs and red meat, that can also be a common cause. And then also a lot of products, you know, sometimes you just pick up something off the shelf and, uh, you know, something that blocks the comedones or pores can also be a cause. Very rarely drugs, which is like anti-tubercular drugs or high dose steroids or anti, you know, some psychiatric medications can trigger that. So even pollution, you know, as you rightly pointed out, so people who live in urban areas or who are, you know, going on a bike, sometimes we have to do it in Bangalore traffic. So even that can trigger acne because it generates free radicals. So when we tell such people to have a lot of antioxidants and use a good barrier cream and a sunscreen, they actually report improvement in acne. So we what are the precautions we can take to avoid acne? Skin wise, very important that you choose a uh, right kind of cleanser for your skin. If you have a oily skin and acne, of course, you can go for your salicylic glycolic. And my personal favorite is use mandelic acid, which is less harsh exfoliant. If you are a dry skin and you still have acne, you have to go for a gentle cleanser. It's very important that you use a non comedogenic moisturizer because sometimes if a patient is having dry skin and pimples, a moisturizer actually helps. Right. Okay. Uh, but it has to be the right one. Patient definitely should use a sunscreen because it also protects you from pollution. And of course the screen which is the new sun. And if you are breaking out quite often, avoid using heavy oils, avoid using liquid foundations. You should get a prescription retinoid definitely done by your dermatologist because the only nuisance a pimple has it, it can leave behind scars. So scar prevention is the main motive of a dermatologist to treat a patient who has pimples. Patients should, if come to lifestyle advice, I would say they should not eat a lot of junk, meat up, you know, refined sugars, carbs and maida. That's a very big enemy. Dairy in certain patients. Not everybody gets acne when they have milk. So in case they feel that whenever I drink a lot of skimmed milk or I take a lot of whey protein, yes, whey protein can also trigger acne. Avoid them. Choose buttermilk or curd. And avoid using too much force while washing face. Acne is rarely because you are not clean. So ma'am, what about the cortofacials, chemical peels, what about the treatments and how they are effective and are they safe? So all the marks, pores and bits left behind by the pimples can be taken care of by microneedling RF, we have things like FSR which can take care of the stretch marks due to weight gain, weight loss. So we have a few switch laser way to hand pieces. One is the conventional mode with which we can take care of all the black spots or the pigmentation, especially on the forehead that many women with PCOS suffer. We also have 532 nanometer hand piece, which we hold as well as gold toning, which is uh, takes care of the red spots, you know, which the painful pimples in the adult hand leaves behind. That helps in reduction of your red spots, your black spots, and all your pigmentation goes in a permanent way. Very important that patient takes a dermatologist uh, advice to start at least topical retinoid and take the appropriate oral anti-androgens or insulin sensitizers. But vis-a-vis, -vis, we are also looking for something for early clearance to get rid of the painful pimples. We know that adult acne generally is very painful and it comes in the lower jawline. It has a more propensity to leave behind scars. So vis-a-vis -vis with your treatment, we start something known as chemical peels. Now the name is a misnomer. We don't use anything to peel off your skin. Why don't we use things like beta hydroxy acid, salicylic acid in combination with mandelic acid, which is basically like a medicated cleaner. 
And along with that, we use agents like lycolic acid, arginine, lactic acid to lighten the black spots left behind by the acne. It helps in faster resolution, building up a patient's confidence. I might put in the clinic is we use a lot of medifacials which involve photofacials. So we use this red and blue light. So, so, so as you can see, we are, uh, you know, making, there is this uh, LED panel which has 5,000 red and blue lights. This red, blue light, especially in the acne, reduces the bacterial load. It helps in earlier resolution of those painful pus-like pimples. And the red light gives you the glow from within. So you can say it's a completely safe procedure. These are, these are lights and not a laser. They are not harmful to your eyes. It can be used for any age group. Are you comfortable, ma'am? Yes. So patient just feels a little warmth and you know, post procedure, their pimples are far less. There is a wonderful glow and it works sometimes as good as an oral antibiotic. So in photofacials, we use various combinations and permutations to take care of your skin health. We also use revitalizing prescription ingredients like vitamin C, antioxidants, acid. So we use all these to actually rejuvenate the skin health of the patient. There are so many products that confuses the patient. So medifacials make your job easy because you can trust your dermatologist with the best suited ingredients for taking care of your skin health. How adult acne is different from the acne in younger ones? See, adult acne is not only more persistent, uh, Pinky, it's also painful. It's mostly along the jawline and if they are bigger in numbers and sometimes they go up to the neck they leave behind more red spots, black spots. They are more disabling to the patient. And you know, at 30, 35, people question you. Yes. You still have acne, aren't doing anything yes. about it. So adult acne is more difficult to treat, more recurring in nature as well. So Pinky ma'am, you know, uh, adult acne requires a more holistic approach. Yes, you need ointments, you need procedures, mm -hmm. but you also need to lose weight. It's very mm -hmm. important that the patient loses fat around the abdomen mm -hmm. and they try to take a low carb, high protein diet, mm -hmm. which is known as a PCOD diet. It's also important for them to have a good lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. no sleeping in the night, no binge eating, no binge watching also I tell patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's very important that, uh, you know, patient also makes an effort to exercise. And yes, exactly. I always tell them, you know, work out to have less breakdown. Yes. So, <laughs>